What's up, everybody? Brian here in the Gecko Lab. Thank you for joining me today. We're counting down the top 10 crested gecko morphs, part one. So in part one of this video, we're gonna cover more seven through 12 as ranked by me. Of course, you might rank morphs in a different order. I highly encourage you, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how would you rank your favorite Crested Gecko morphs. This is how I rank them. We're gonna start off with number 12, but real quick before we get into it, let's have a very short conversation about what a morph is. You hear that a lot in reptiles. What is a morph? A morph is very basically just any genetic mutation that alters the visual appearance of the gecko. That is how we get all the different colors and patterns and everything that we have that makes crested geckos so much fun. Like this confetti right here, I absolutely love it. These are my top 12 favorite crested gecko morphs. Let's start out with number 12. At number 12, I have listed an absolute classic, the Harlequin. Now the Harlequin is basically when you have the base color of the gecko, that's usually either gray, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, whatever that base color is. And then you have the pattern on top of that, usually some mixture of yellows, creams, whites, orange sometimes, that Harlequin pattern on the sides and the back legs. That's what makes a Harlequin. I love these because there's a few different variations of Harlequins. So a basic Harlequin has pattern on the sides and a little bit on the back legs. And then when you get an extreme amount of pattern all the way up the sides, high coverage all over the back and front legs, that's an extreme Harlequin. We also have tricolor Harlequins. That's when the the pattern has almost multiple layers where there's a cream and a white layer on top or even an orange and a white layer on top. You get a tricolor Harlequin. All of these are under the Harlequin morph and I absolutely love them. My number 12 favorite Crest of the Gecko morph. This video is sponsored by FreeGeckoGiveaways.com. FreeGeckoGiveaways.com is your one-stop shop for all of your diets, caging accessories, gecko merch, and more. Every dollar spent is one entry to win our grand prize like this. Complete Zen Habitat's Crested Gecko setup. If you win, you get the entire thing for free. And with a new grand prize given away every six weeks, every purchase is your opportunity to win. For my number 11 favorite crested gecko, I took some inspiration from my shirt. These are available at freegeckogiveaways.com. I'm going with Dalmatians, specifically Super Dalmatians and Confetti Dalmatians. Now, any gecko with even a single spot is considered a Dalmatian, but I like to focus specifically on Ink Spot Super Dals and Confetti Super Dals. So Ink Spot Super Dals, as most of us know, are known for their big black spots. Sometimes they are more faded out. People call them oil spots. These are usually seen in combination with the tiger gene on lighter based yellow and orange geckos. I think the contrast is amazing. Chunky Monkey being one of my absolute favorite examples. And the confetti Dalmatians are when they have red spots. They can either have only red spots or a combination of red and black spots. Again, I love the contrast of the bright red spots making confetti Dalmatians absolutely beautiful this is it was it was tough to put them at number 11 but i put dalmatians as my number 11 gecko on the countdown Moving on to number 10 in our countdown, I chose the Cappuccino Morph. Now these are really interesting and somewhat controversial, but I gotta be honest, just on pure visual aesthetics, I absolutely love them. So the Cappuccino trait is a mutation that does a few things. It mostly modifies the color of the animal. For one, it makes the, the white cream color right on the base of the tail, paper white, very bright white, but otherwise it tends to limit the amount of the really white cream color on a gecko. It can almost make them look like somebody's turn the saturation level up in Photoshop on them. The oranges and browns get much richer and deeper, but the whites and creams tend to fade away. It makes for a really unique looking animal. And the best part about cappuccinos is some of the combinations you can do with them. Cappuccino, um, Pinstripes are beautiful. Cappuccino extreme harlequins are beautiful. Now, unfortunately, with the cappuccino gene, when you breed two of them together, you can produce what's called a super cappuccino. And these are really a form of translucent. Unfortunately, they come with a lot of genetic health issues. Their nostril size is reduced or eliminated altogether. And the biggest problem is they seem to have calcium absorption issues and they get a lot of spinal problems and a lot of bone issues. They're really not very healthy animals and producing them intentionally 
intentionally is considered very unethical. There are a bunch out there that already exist. We have a few here that are just living their best lives in the Gecko Lab, but my favorite cappuccino combination is definitely the Frappuccino, and that's a cappuccino lily white combo. They're absolutely gorgeous. The cappuccino gene does not take out the white of the lily white like it does with the Harlequin gene, but it does take out a lot of the Harlequin gene, which leaves you a really interesting combination. A big trademark of these is that dark head that you get on Frappuccinos. Just such a cool looking animal. I love the look of the cappuccinos. I put them at number 10. Moving right along to the number nine spot on our countdown, I went with another absolute classic, the pinstripe. The pinstripe was one of the first crested gecko morphs that people really sought after to not only acquire, but produce and refine and improve. When I first got into the game, 2008, 2009 era, getting a full complete pinstripe was the absolute dream. And that dream is what really drove my passion to begin with and got me to this beautiful place we are now. A pinstripe is generally defined as a gecko that has the spiking crests all the way along its its back of the sides of its head continue all the way down its back. They are usually highlighted in a white or cream color and they're absolutely gorgeous. The structure is really what tips them off and makes them the best. There's a number of different variations of pinstripes. For one, you can get them in varying base colors, black, brown, red, and orange, and yellow are some of my favorites, but I also love quad stripes. Now, a quad stripe is when they have lateral striping that also has those 3D raised scales along the laterals as well. That's always been one of my favorite looks. I was just dying to produce quad stripes when I was younger, and here, 15 years later, they're still one of my favorites. I put pinstripes on my list at number nine. All right, everybody, we got two spots left in part one of our top 12 crested gecko morphs. So we're moving on to number eight, and this one's gonna be a bit controversial from my point of view. For any of you that have ever heard me talk about this topic before, you probably expected this morph wouldn't be on the list at all, but tigers have really started to grow on me over the last few years. Now, I have always kind of not liked tigers and never really sought to breed them, but recently over the past few years, they've started to grow on me more and more. So tigers are exactly what they sound like. They are a solid pattern colored gecko, solid colored gecko with tiger patterns going down the sides, usually running vertical, though when you combine tiger and pinstripe together, the pinstripe gene turns those tiger markings and they then run laterally. We sometimes call that reverse pinning. Regardless, most of my tigers are also interbred with my ink spot super dalmatian projects and i do think the combination of a yellow gecko with red tiger markings and big black spots all of it comes together to make a beautiful animal i've really started to grow an appreciation for tigers so i put them at number eight for my seventh favorite crested gecko morph, I went with the white spot trait. Now, I usually just call it the white spot trait. It's known by a number of other names, including Drippy Dorsal and Blizzard. For a long time, this trait was kind of confused to be just another Harlequin variation, but we now know it is a separate trait of its own. This trait can often be hard to spot because it does blend in so well on extreme Harlequins. You can usually see it if you look at the dorsal line right below the pinstripes. You'll see a line of white spot running across the edge of the gecko. You'll also sometimes see them on the sides and especially the back legs is a good marker. The real key is when you get this trait on a patternless gecko, the white spots really pop and look incredibly interesting. They don't get those across the dorsal line, but I absolutely love it. As you can see on our boy Napalm here, he's one of my favorite examples. This trait has been so often misunderstood. It was one of the first traits that was identified by another breeder and the crested gecko community as a whole kind of rejected it and tried to pretend like it wasn't a real thing. I'm so glad that we've moved past that and most people now accept it for the beautiful trait that it is. Number seven on my list, the white spot slash drippy dorsal trait. All right, everybody, that brings us to the end of part one, number seven through 12 in the top 12 crested gecko morphs. According to me, let me know, what do you think I got wrong? What order should the first half have been in and what traits did I not get to that you think are gonna be in part one or maybe won't even make my list altogether? Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, be safe, 
be kind to each other, follow along for part two, and I'll see you guys soon.